Hello and welcome, you are looking at special quadrilaterals and their properties. Let's get to it. This is a quadrilateral. It has four sides, two opposite one another. It has four angles, two opposite one another. Hence the name. Its interior angle sum is 360 degrees. It has two diagonals. However, this quadrilateral is not a special quadrilateral. The only thing special about this quadrilateral is that it is not special. It identifies with zero properties regarding congruence, parallel lines, and uniformity of angles or diagonals. In this video, I will uncover special quadrilateral names by definition and other certain properties will be called upon. Note that no matter what kind of shape is identified during this video, they are all still quadrilaterals. The fact that there may be a more appropriate name for the quadrilateral does not dismiss the fact that the shape still has four sides. Therefore, even though it may become a more specific type of quadrilateral, it does not mean that it cannot still be called a quadrilateral. I only emphasize this because specific types of quadrilaterals have specific properties, and if another quadrilateral has the exact same properties as another quadrilateral and then some, it may end up having a different name, but it does not exclude your ability to call it whatever its previous name was, including quadrilateral. So please pay attention to the writing on the screen as to clue you in on what something can be called versus what something must be called. And pay attention to the diagrams with the proper marks indicating congruence, parallel lines, and right angles. This may help build a better understanding of perception regarding special quadrilaterals, their properties, and other names which they can be called. Okay, time to begin. The first of the quadrilaterals I will focus on is the parallelogram. It has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, hence the name. Alongside that, it contains other properties that also must be true if at least that much is true, such as both pairs of opposite sides are also congruent, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, any two consecutive sides are supplementary, and both diagonals bisect each other. The diagonals are not necessarily congruent to one another, but when they intersect, they create sets of congruent parts, hence the idea of them bisecting each other. While the parallelogram appears unique for having both pairs of opposite sides parallel as opposed to just one pair or no pairs at all, it can be morphed into one of two unique shapes thereafter depending on the relationship of the side lengths or the angle measures. Let's begin with the side lengths. If you make all the side lengths congruent to one another, you have constructed what is called a rhombus. A rhombus is a quadrilateral with all four sides congruent, and although you may think that because I made this out of a parallelogram that both pairs of opposite sides might not necessarily be parallel as well, that is incorrect. No matter what kind of quadrilateral I make with all four sides congruent, the rhombus will always have both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So while we should most specifically call this a rhombus because of its definition, it would not be incorrect to also call this quadrilateral a parallelogram, or a quadrilateral, because every property the parallelogram has, the rhombus also has. The rhombus just happens to have more properties than that of the parallelogram, such as, much like a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent and consecutive angles are supplementary. Also, diagonals still aren't congruent, but they still bisect each other. But not just that, the rhombus features diagonals that are now also perpendicular to each other. They are perpendicular bisectors. Also, unlike a parallelogram, diagonals now bisect their angles. And because opposite angles are congruent, you will get two quartets of congruent angles thanks to the diagonals. The rhombus is just one way that you can mutate a parallelogram into a specific looking shape. What if instead we took the parallelogram and made all of the angles congruent? Then they'd have to be right angles. You are now looking at the rectangle which by definition has all right angles, nothing else necessary. And again, because silly me decided to make a rectangle from a parallelogram, you might be thinking that not all rectangles also have everything that parallelograms have, including two pairs of opposite lines that are parallel. Nope, just Chuck Testa. Let's explore everything that the rectangle has to offer, much like the parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel and congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Diagonals bisect each other. This time, however, you get to see some differences in the diagonals because the nature of the rectangle's shape. Diagonals are now congruent to one another, so when they bisect each other, all four segments that are made are now congruent to one another. And you have created two pairs of isosceles triangles. So as you can see, just because there exists a more fitting name for this quadrilateral does not take away from the fact that it is a parallelogram as well, or a quadrilateral for that matter. 
However, just because the rhombus is also related to the parallelogram does not mean that it relates to it the same way that the rectangle does. As you can see, they both have acquired the parallelogram's traits, but then have taken on different forms altogether. It's like if a mother bears two children and one is like, you have your mother's eyes and ears, and the other is like, you have your mother's nose and mouth. And although they may have the same hair color and last name, and they are both good at sports, they might have a lot of differences along the way. So a rectangle is a type of parallelogram, and a rhombus too is a type of parallelogram, which makes you think that they are close to the same thing, but a rectangle still is not a type of rhombus, and vice versa. So what would happen if you gave the rhombus all right angles? Well, you would have a square. Or what would happen if you gave the rectangles all congruent sides? You too would have a square. A square, by definition, is a quadrilateral with all right angles and all congruent sides. It is the proverbial love child of the rectangle and the rhombus. And for this particular analogy, we'll have to excuse the previous analogy I used because they were brothers before, now they're not. Anyway, moving on. Anything that a rhombus has, a square also has. Anything that a rectangle has, a square also has too. I like to think of the square as the most specific type of quadrilateral in that it is loaded with many features because it inherits everything before it. Opposite sides remain parallel. Opposite angles remain congruent. Consecutive angles remain supplementary. Diagonals are congruent, bisect their respective angles, and are perpendicular bisectors of each other. I still don't know why calling somebody a square is something of a negative. This shape seems so cool it has it all, plus you can call it a bunch of other names, such as the rectangle, rhombus, parallelogram, and quadrilateral. Maybe there is something to be said about being uniquely different though. We have focused so far on quadrilaterals with both pairs of sides that are parallel. What about just one pair of sides that is parallel? That would be a quadrilateral called the trapezoid. The parallel sides are also known as bases. Yes, even the top ones. The non-parallel sides could also be known as legs. In a general trapezoid, there is nothing else very unique besides one pair of sides being parallel. Diagonals don't bisect each other, or their angles. They aren't even necessarily congruent. However, because of same side interior angles, the trapezoid will have two sets of supplementary sides. They have to be angles of different bases, though. We could decide to apply vertical symmetry to the trapezoid, and it gets a more unique name called the isosceles trapezoid. But is an isosceles trapezoid no longer a trapezoid? Of course not. It is still a trapezoid because it still has the same definition of a trapezoid. One pair of parallel sides. The legs in this trapezoid are now congruent though, and that does mean a few more things are true. Base angles are congruent. Yes, even the top ones. Diagonals are now congruent too, though they do not bisect their angles or each other. I guess the isosceles trapezoid is kind of cool, though that is all it can be. A trapezoid. Oh, and of course a quadrilateral. Don't forget that. So keep in mind that trapezoids are in their own family and do not fit in the same family as something like the square or its elders. This includes the rhombus, rectangle, and parallelogram. Going by any quadrilateral's features, just think in your head about how these things morph and you should be fine. Go by their extremes. Know the difference between a quadrilateral that can be something versus a quadrilateral that must be something. A quadrilateral with diagonals bisecting each other can be a rectangle, rhombus, or square, but at the very least it must be a parallelogram. Don't feel too down if you have trouble discerning the difference between one and the other early on. Just keep practicing and you will pick up on the little differences that make a special quadrilateral exactly that. Special. At the very least, the good news is you're definitely not a kite. Fiend!